Welcome in the Rover Sports, guys. It is Monday after a crazy, crazy NFL Sunday. And uh, we have a special guest, you know. Ian of Jet Central is always a special guest, but we got on Tanner, voice of the jungle man. Thank you for coming on my channel. Thanks for coming on Rover. Absolutely. You know, thank you for having me. It's kind of hard not to not to want to yell and scream. There's a lot of ups and downs. It was a terrible game to watch as a Bengals fan yesterday, but the the just the news alone of this Marvin Lewis leaving, I mean it, it you know, I don't want to say it brought tears of joy to my eye, but it was definitely an early Christmas present waking up. <laughs> and also Jesse J I'm gonna let Jet Central talk, but Jesse James also kind of gave you a gift, or or the referees gave you another gift. Oh, absolutely. I mean they you know it was we shouldn't have even I mean the whole game was not in our favor, but even with you know the the extra presence, I guess you could say that we got, it was still a pathetic game. I mean, athletics wise, mm -hmm. right? Ahead, absolutely, Jamie. yeah, man. So I I just you're a Bengals fan, and I've I've been trying to find a lot of Bengals fans because like this is such an interesting topic. But Marvin Lewis is now gone, right? He's not going to be the head coach for Cincinnati anymore. And, I mean, the Bengals, they're not like the Browns. They're not like the Jets. They're not doing this constant – there's not a, a constant turnover in head coaches. Um, being that, you know, Marvin Lewis has been there for so long, does it feel kind of weird that, like, all of a sudden, like, you're in the market for a head coach, like, you know, because you guys are never really looking for one? Now, see, we have – I mean, I guess as Bengals fans, we've wanted a head coach for so long. I guess sort of this fan base has kind of been looking and saying – you know, hey, maybe there's somebody over here. Maybe there's somebody over there. So, so as a fan, we've kind of been looking, and it's, it's pretty much obvious that the, the system that runs the Bengals has just been con consistently okay with this medioc mediocrity. But, you know, it, and you say now that Marvin Lewis is leaving, I'm not sure if you guys even saw the news reports. Marvin Lewis is now saying that that's not even true, that, that maybe they spoke a little bit too fast. And he's not 100%. So it, it's pretty much – and I got a couple guys that have told me, you know, personally, hey, it, it's a done deal. Marvin Lewis is out. But everybody's always kind of been saying, hey, you know, there, there's Chip Kelly. Hey, you know, maybe we could get, you know, Harbaugh to come from Michigan. You know, it, it's – the fan base wants a new coach. The Brown, the Brown family organization, the owners of the Bengals, they don't. Hey, Tim, okay, I got gotcha. you. When did uh, – and sorry, JC, I'm going to let you tee up another one. When did – was there ever a moment in the Lewis era, especially like like when Dalton was drafted out of TCU, when you guys made the playoffs one year and you're kind of like, I think Marvin could get this thing going and we can win a couple of games. When, when was that year for you where you where you still held hope with Marvin Lewis? Oh, well, well, that's the thing about Marvin is he's given the Bengals so much hope. He When Marvin hired on, the Bengals were – I mean – two and 14, the Bengals were just as bad as the Browns, if not, you know, the exact same level. But, you know, the, the time that you're talking about is about three, four years ago, somewhere around there, when A.J. Green was just hitting his prime. I mean, you know, Andy Dalton, A.J. Green were having that beautiful connection. Jeremy Hill was coming out, had a 500-yard rookie running season. And that was that season when we went, you know, 10 games undefeated you know, the first 10 games where as a fan base, it was kind of like, oh my God, this might actually be the year where we, we beat this curse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, well, and I went, I actually went to the playoff game that year when we lost in the tragic way to the, to the Steelers. And when we, it was pretty much a lock that we were going to win this game I mean, I was sitting in the family section, and there were people with tears in their eyes. You know, it's been over 20 years since this team was truly, truly a dominant force. And then to watch them, I mean, just throw it away was it, – it's just heartbreaking. It, it leaves less and less confidence for – you know, I like to call him Sleepyhead Marvin. He, he shows no emotion. Yeah, I, know, I know, actually know a thing or two about that because, I mean, we got Todd Bowles as uh, the Jets head coach. But um, kind of switching gears from the uh, from the coaching staff to the quarterback position, I know Andy Dolan, to me, I mean, it could just be me personally. 
I don't really view Andy Dalton as the main problem for the Bengals. He's not a top five guy, but he's definitely not the reason why the Bengals have been struggling. And I don't really necessarily think he's the, the, the 100% reason or the defining factor why they haven't had that much playoff success. So let me ask you, do you want Andy Dalton, A.J. McCarron? Would you, you know, do you prefer to draft a new guy and be signed one? Who do you want to move forward with in the 2018 season at the quarterback position? See, I like Andy Dalton. You know, and, and Ian, I think you touched on a great point. He's not a bad quarterback. He catches a lot of flack because of our terrible offensive line that cannot protect him. And I would say that we need to move forward and make A.J. McCarron this, this Bengals franchise quarterback. But as long as we have this offensive line that continues to just do nothing and, and let our quarterback get sacked and sacked, I don't want anybody but Andy Dalton. We might as well run out our time and let him be the one, you know, per se, to, to, to take these hits rather than bringing in this brand-new all-star, you know, almost rookie quarterback. And I've heard some talks about, you know, if the Bengals get number nine draft pick trying to take Baker Mayfield, I don't get it. You know, we, we have two fantastic quarterbacks. Even our third string, Dr- Jake Driscoll, is fantastic. Quarterbacks are not our issue. You know, I want to see Andy Dalton have this success, but with a new coach, if we can get a new offensive line in there, I would like to see us move forward with McCarron. Gotcha. With McCarron? I like McCarron. I think he's a great guy, but that's only like if that's only if we can get this offensive line to to even block. You know, and, and on my channel I, I say a lot of times our offensive line is like, you know, the trash can sitting at the end of my curb. They're not doing anything. I don't want to subject a new quarterback to these, these hits that Andy is taking until we can solidify that line. Okay, so you were at the game where McCarron got the closest to winning a playoff game. I mean, you know, the national guys, we, I saw the Chargers game, Bengals, Chargers. It might have happened once or twice over the past, like, four or five years. It always seems like you guys play 1 o'clock on Sunday when you all get there. And freaking Mc, and, uh, Andy Dalton shat the bet in that game. The Colts game, you guys had, like, almost nobody left but Rex Burkhead. So that's kind of excusable. <clears throat> But what do you think about McCarron? Were you a little bit disappointed after the Steelers game that this, you know, two-time champion quarterback at Alabama didn't just take over for Andy? No, not at all. He came out and, and he was comparable to a Tom Brady. I mean, he came out in a time where we were having one of the greatest seasons in the past 20 years and to, to just jump in and to be able to take over and then take us as far as he did in the playoffs – he didn't lose that playoffs game for us. If anything, he helped us win that. And, I, I mean, I think McCarron's fantastic. I think he's a great leader on the field. He's obviously itching to get the heck out of Cincinnati. He doesn't want to be here. He wants to go start somewhere, and I don't blame him. Right. Right. Right on, man. Um, this is actually, like, the last kind of main question I had for you. So, with Marvin being gone, if you were in charge, right, if you were the new general manager of the Bengals – who would you try to handpick to be the new Bengals head coach? Like, do you have a certain guy in mind, defensive, offensive guy? I think offensive, it would be the main thing to go with right now. I've caught a lot of flack from friends and people I've talked to. Um, I like Josh McDaniels coming out of New England. He's a very offensive-centered guy. If we kept our defensive coordinator, Paul Gunther, who is who has just kind of, you know, kept the ball rolling, we have a strong defense. If we could get Josh McDaniels this – you know, like I said, this uh, offensive formulated head coach, because we have an all-star everything but an offensive line. You know, if we could get somebody with that mindset and somebody who's also coming from a winning team, you know, I, I think I like Josh McDaniels. Harbaugh, realistically, we're not going to get him. Even Gruden, we're not going to get him. I think McDaniels is the way to go personally. Tanner, I wanted to ask you this question, too, while we have you here. We're talking the voice of the jungle, guys. All Bengals content, NFL content. Everybody come and sub him up. He's a great guy. And Tanner, you know, national media-wise, you know, I'm up here in the Northeast, Jet Central's down south, and every single Bengals game, you know, in the AFC North, we always see 
you know, Vontez and Pac-Man getting involved. And, and the Bengals have this stereotype about, about the players that Marvin drafts. And it's like, you know, it's tough SEC football players. Do you think that the culture of the, of the Cincinnati Bengals has been a little too loose or not as, not as organized as you'd want with Marvin Lewis? Is not at all. Not at all. No way. I love the way Vontez Perfect is, and there is not one team out there that would not draft him in a matter of seconds. I think that rough and tough culture, that, that hard-hitting, that Pac-Man Jones attitude, that's what we need. We got Marvin Lewis who's taking naps on the sideline, who, who doesn't even know his playbook. When we got, you know, I go to these games, Pac-Man Jones, that's the guy that's rallying the defense. That's the guy that's bringing the team together. If anything, we need players that are like that, but we also need a coaching staff that is willing to keep those people in line. Right. Hey, yeah. Can you, can you keep them on? I gotta get. I gotta get something for one second. So yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, man. It's it's crazy because it's like yeah, I, I wish know, the New York Jets played with that style of defense. Just like no one wants to go into Cincinnati and play them, especially if you know you're a uh, division rival. You know, I uh, I actually made a video the other day, um, yesterday about the uh, the Marvin Lewis thing, or a couple of days ago. You know, him getting fired, and I said in that video that. If you're a steel, like a steel player for the Steelers or the Browns or even the Ravens, you do not want to play Cincinnati because you're just going to get your head hunted almost every, every single time you play. And I really like that style. I really like how aggressive it is. Nobody wants to go into Cincinnati and play them. It, it's really that simple. I just wish the Jets had more of that aggressive, violent edge. And, I mean, you guys had your run at least a couple years ago. And just like the Bengals, you guys are working through some stuff, but it's that, that culture that a team has to have where the players are not only self-motivated, but they're as a team, they're motivated. You know, in that hard-hitting culture, like you said, nobody wants to come into Cincinnati and play against our defense. And just like the Steelers, just like the Ravens, you know, I can't say too much about the Browns because they're the Browns, but... This, you know, the AFC North, it is such a hard-hitting division. It's the black and blue division. That is truly what's given us our momentum, you know. And, and just like you guys have had your moments, our defense, that's where we tend to shine. That and A.J. Green. Right. I, I just love the, the play style. I love the violent, aggressive attitude that Cincinnati plays with. Just wish the Jets would play, play with that uh, a little bit more. Well, and I mean, you guys are working on a rebuilding year, so hopefully, you know, you guys can at least draft some players and, and work in free agency. But, yeah, we locked Devontae down, and, and that's for good reason. You know, it, it, there's, when we have a player like that, it doesn't matter. A lot of people say, oh, well, you know, they're, they're criminals, they're thugs, they're this and that. Not only do they do so much for the community, but they're not necessarily thugs. When you think about it, they are – they, those two, especially Pac-Man and Perfect, there are no, there's not a player more passionate than those guys. When they step on the field, they are there to play. They love the game of football more than anything else. And that's truly what's clear and evident. How even AJ Hawk like said, and maybe this is because guys are afraid of Vontez, but he said like he's like the one guy you want to have in your foxhole, you know, is Vontez Perfect. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even though he is this, this rough exterior shell type of guy, you know, he's there for you. And you know that that's your brother. If, he, if he's on your team, if you're wearing the same jersey as him, that's your brother. And every single one of those players on that field will tell you that, that there's not a better defensive player out there. He is number one. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you this one question. I'm going to let JC ask this. So Marvin Lewis – well, I know he's kind of emotionless, and there's a lot of coaches like Bowles. Jim Caldwell's even – he makes Marvin Lewis look like freaking, you know, like uh, Red Bull Energy John Gruden. That's what Jim Cal – Jim Caldwell's practically dead. I haven't even seen him blink his eyes <laughs> up there in Detroit. But I agree with you. I think Marvin Lewis, right, his problem is his development of players, maybe – and uh, John Ross, who the heck knows where this guy is? And, and then how about his, his um, conservative play calling? I mean, he never takes over a football game. There's no urgency with Lewis, it seems. There is absolutely zero urgency. 
He has this, this animosity towards rookies like John Ross. For some reason, you know, it's getting released in these press releases that he's now starting to dog on these players. We don't know why. He has zero player development. What he is good at and what he is, is frankly, one of the best at is player scouting. You know, the Bengals do not have this star-studded team for a reason. And they are star-studded. We just can't keep it together. But Marvin Lewis is the key player. He, he would make the best general manager. The best. But when we have a player that – or a, a coach that has no emotion, that when you look at him on the sideline, it, it's almost as if he doesn't even want to get involved. He just, he's just there to, to be there. Yeah, it, it sounds like GM would probably be a, a more suitable job for, you know, Marvin Lewis's strengths and weaknesses. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of funny because you look at the, the Cincinnati Bengals coaching tree, right? You have Jay Gruden. I believe Mike Zimmer was there. Obviously, Hugh Jackson. There's been a lot of notable names, like, to, to depart from Cincinnati. And, you know, it's worked out for Minnesota. It's worked out, I guess, for the most part for Washington. Do you, as a Bengals fan – uh, I don't mean this in any like negative way at all, but do you ever feel like a little bit jealous that the Minnesota Vikings had a guy off your staff and they're like doing really well and Washington made the playoffs last year and you know he looks like to be the guy in Cincinnati, whereas Marvin Lewis is kind of on the, on his way out. You know, do you ever feel like a little um, I guess just jealousy, like wishing that damn I wish we would uh, promoted Zimmer. One hundred percent. Here we are. We're looking at this guy. He came from Cincinnati. You know, Marvin Lewis raised this guy and taught him how to be a good coach. And yet we're still stuck with this same coach. They can't win a damn playoff game. But yet here you go. You know, you look at the Vikings and you look at how Mike Zimmer has turned around. Of course I'm jealous. You know, that's Cincinnati blood. What I do love is that he's still able to give that respect back to Marvin Lewis and, and likewise, you know, vice versa. But, of course, I'm – you know, these are, are players that – or coaches that were developed in Cincinnati. They, they coach these same players that are just frustrated. I mean, we saw against Jacksonville when the Bengals – A.J. Green fought Jalen Ramsey. That's just the players getting so damn frustrated with a team that continues to go nowhere. And coaching is at the top of that. Right. And you look even this might even be a positive in the long run, Tanner, that this whole kind of little dip so that you guys can finally get to that point where, where Marvin Lewis, uh, you know, gets fired. But, I, you know, looking at your roster right now and sorry for the background noise, um, really annoying. Can you, can you guys just stop one second? Uh, <laughs> no worries. Question off to Tanner. You guys have Joe Mixon. You guys have Gio Bernard, who I think is probably the best second running back, maybe to only Alvin Kamara and a couple of other guys. You, you guys drafted my boy Carl Lawson from, from Auburn. Oh, I, I yeah. Mean, you guys have talent. Like, next year, you guys could get right back to wild card. Big Ben's going to retire, you know? What do you guys think? I think you guys got some talent for the new guy coming in. Oh, I mean, the Bengals, we've always had – we're a star-studded team. We have these top-notch players – I mean, with so much freaking talent that they don't even know what to do with. And, and like you said, Joe Mixon, dear God, that guy stepped into a role that not only did we need, but he's coming off, you know, his, his kind of uh, iffy background. And a lot of people didn't want to give him a chance. Right. And he was the first one to say, hey, you know, I'm here to, to fix my mistakes and I'm here to play football. And look at him. I mean, we, we have – the best running back the Bengals have seen in years. You know, Jeremy Hill had that breakout year, but we haven't seen anything from him since. We continue to get these all-star players. I mean, we have John Ross, which we still haven't seen anything from, and especially William Jackson III, who, I mean, is an absolute monster on defense. We're star-studded. And, and, you know, and I hate to, to keep talking – Talking about it, Spencer, but it, it really does boil down to the coaching. And, and freaking, he wants to put him at cornerback. Like, how, how, how worse of a statement for someone's confidence when you're literally telling the number nine pick, John Ross. If you hear any interview with John Ross, I interviewed John Ross. He's an, he's an unbelievable person. Like, I think that the guy is perfect for you guys. I would not give up on him one bit. Oh, and I, I wish that we had more to even see. 
you know, we, we really don't even have enough to, to make a good judgment on because Marvin Lewis has this bias against, against new players per se. And we really haven't seen him be able to, to, to grow and spread to be the true player that he is. And it's sad. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like you know, it's funny because the Cincinnati Bengals, to, to you know, your guys' point, they have so many good players. Perfect. Green. I, I, mean, I could sit here for five, ten minutes and just rattle off great players. Kirk Patrick. Kirk Pat, you know, all these great players. Geno Atkins. Yeah, literally, like all these pro bowlers and everything like that. And it's like, hell, I mean, even some of the backups are, are good enough to be starters, like McCarron and whatnot. Um, but it's crazy because I still feel like the Bengals fin- like are picking top ten every year. So that's why I feel like it's not such a – like a rebuild as far as – like or it should be more of like a reload or like a retool. Like once you get a new head coach in the building – the Bengals can just absolutely take off with an 11 or 12 win season. And I don't think that's over exaggerating. No, I like the way that you said that it, it's not, it's not a rebuilding se- season. I like, I, I really like that. It, it's almost, it's almost like a rebranding, you know, a new, a new, um, just a new attitude that, that we need to have. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Hey, Tanner, um, we only got 50 more minutes here uh, on our podcast. Now I'm joking with you, man. It, it was uh, – you did unbelievable for your first time. JC, thanks a lot for joining me, man. At yeah, Tanner, thanks. Uh, Voice of the Jungle was a lot of fun, and JC was a lot of fun. Hey, yeah, thanks for man. having me on. Anytime. Yeah, anytime, guys, and, uh, and, and th- thanks a ton.